You guys, I finally made a strapless corset and I'm absolutely in love. It's gonna be perfect for spring and summer. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Tracy. I have a passion for upcycling clothing and I teach sewing on here. I created a digital sewing pattern for this corset so it's available on my Etsy shop and I have linked it down below. You can upcycle anything you own into this corset as long as it's a woven fabric. I picked up an eyelet button down from the thrift store. I had some leftover cotton so I just used this like fun floral to line the corset. You're also gonna need some fusible interfacing to make the corset more sturdy, some double fold bias binding to finish the top and the bottom hems. You can also add some lace trim which is really cute. You also need um, some ribbon or cording for your lace up back. In the description down below I list all of the materials. You can have a lot of fun with different prints, colors. Let's get into this tutorial. I start by taking the button down I thrifted. So this was 100% cotton. You're welcome to thrift any type of woven fabric you like. Cotton works great. Grab your pattern pieces and just line them up to the straight grain. Don't forget to mark all of your notches by cutting them or using a water soluble marker. Don't forget to cut out your lining pieces also. So on the pattern itself, I indicate how many to cut out of your lining, interfacing and main fabric. I'm using this eyelet fabric for the main fabric, but since there's like holes in the fabric, I kind of wanted something behind it. Went ahead and cut out some white plain fabric and I'm just gonna back the main fabric with that, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna do a stay stitch all the way around those two pieces so they can act as one, but take your fusible interfacing and just fuse it onto your main fabric and your lining fabrics. After you fuse those pieces, I'm just like taking the eyelet piece and placing it on top. I take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch stay stitch to keep both layers together so it acts as one. And all of your pieces are cut so you have your main fabric fused and your lining and now we can actually start sewing this corset together. Take pattern piece number four and place right sides together of the lining and the main fabric and you're going to pin the center back and take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance. Push the seam allowance towards the lining fabric and do a sixteenth of an inch under stitch. After understitching, the lining will fold underneath and you can see we're gonna end up doing three bone channels. So one channel for a bone, the next one will be for grommets and then another bone. So the lining will fold underneath, just pin that in place. Take it to the sewing machine and stitch right on top of that understitch so you catch the front of the main fabric. And don't forget to back tack. From that stitch line, you're gonna sew 3 8 of an inch away from that to create a bone channel, and you're gonna sew two more channels, one for grommets and the other one for a bone. After sewing the bone channels on the center back, you can see that pattern piece four is done. So you wanna take pattern piece three and just place right sides together of the main fabric and just pin all layers together. Now you can take the right side of the lining pieces and place them together. So I don't know if that's making sense. You're pretty much sandwiching pattern piece number four in between three. Take it to the sewing machine and sew all layers together with a half inch seam allowance. Don't forget to back tack and you can see that the seam allowance for pattern piece four is like perfectly encased into pattern piece three so you have a really nice finish on the outside and the inside. Next to that stitch you're going to do a 3 8 of an inch bone channel so you're going to do a top stitch so you're going to hold the lining and the main fabric together and sew 
both layers together to create that channel. Another tip to make sure that your fabric overlaps correctly and you have an even neckline and hemline is just to mark the half inch seam allowance at the top and the bottom and then you can just like place everything. This piece is curved more so sometimes it's easier to just stay stitch those layers together first and then place right sides together of the main fabric. Pin it in place and take your lining and place right sides together of the lining and sandwich iron piece number three's seam allowance. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance. Don't forget to back tack. Once you sew those layers together, you have a really nice encased seam allowance. So right next to that stitch, you're gonna stitch 3 8 of an inch away from that seam so you can create a bone channel. On pattern piece two, I already went ahead and stayed stitch the main fabric and the lining just so it would be easier to pin pattern piece number one to it. Take pattern piece number one and place right sides together of the main fabric. That seam is very curved, so make sure you match up all your notches. It makes it easier. Since this seam is very curved, I'm just going to take this to the sewing machine now and stitch all these three layers together first. So I'm doing a quarter inch stay stitch on the sewing machine. After sewing that in place, you can take pattern piece number one's lining and place right sides together of the lining and pin that in place. So since we did that stay stitch, it makes it easier to pin the lining to it. Pin it in place and take it to the sewing machine, sew a half inch seam allowance. To kind of relieve some of the tension at the bust, I'm just taking my scissors and clipping about a quarter inch into that seam allowance. Everything's encased into pattern piece one. And you can see that pattern piece two and one form that cup really nicely, so it has that bump for the cups to sit perfectly. Before we do the bone channel on that seam, sew the other side first, so just sew pattern pieces four, three, and two together. And I'm just gonna go ahead and attach my label to that first. Now to attach the other side to pattern piece one, just make sure you've already stayed stitched pattern piece number two. You're going to just push the lining from pattern piece one underneath so it's out of the way and place right sides together only of the main fabric and pin it in place. Take it to the sewing machine and just do a quarter inch stay stitch. After stitching those three layers together, you're gonna put everything inside, if that makes sense. So you're kind of like just bunching everything and putting it in between the lining and the main pieces. So um, I know this is gonna get confusing, but push everything towards the center front and just kind of like roll it. And then grab the lining, pin right sides together of the lining. Now you can sew all four layers together. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance. Don't forget to back tack. And after you sew that seam, you can just clip that seam allowance a quarter inch just so you can kind of get that really nice curved shape. It'll relieve a lot of the tension. Now that you have a burrito, you can just pull this right side out and you kind of just got to move it around and you know, you eventually get it, but you have encased all of the seam allowances. On the inside of the garment, the lining looks so gorgeous as well as the main fabric. And 
now you can just pin both layers together at the front panels and just take it to the sewing machine and sew the 3 8 of an inch bone channels on those princess seams. Before we add the double fold bias tape to finish our hemline, just remove all of the extra threads and just anything that's not even, just make it even. And when I attach my bias tape, I like to attach it as I sew, so I don't pin it in place or anything. It's a lot easier and faster, so when you take it to the sewing machine, just start sewing your bias tape a little bit first, and then slowly place the fabric, and then just sew and like hold it in place. I'm ironing the bias tape just so everything lays super flat. to buy the 10 yard roll it's just a lot cheaper in bulk so I will link it down below and I also buy caps take your spiral steel boning and just start from the top and just bring it all the way down to the top of the bias tape and then mark that and just remove three quarters of an inch from that measurement because you need to take into account the binding that will be at the top and it needs some ease these cutters are the best for cutting the spiral steel bone. They're from Home Depot, so I will link them. And a good trick is to place some sheer fabric on top while you cut just so it catches like all of those small pieces that are flying everywhere when you're cutting this wire. Make sure to also cut the exact same length for the other side. There's 10 bone channels, so you're just going to repeat this for all of them. To attach a cap to a bone, just place it at one end and grab a big plier and hold it in place. Now you can grab your other plier and just squeeze both pliers at the same time to like push evenly and this will make sure the cap does not fall off. Slip all of the bones into their designated channels. After pushing all the bones in all the way, grab your double fold bias tape and just finish your top neckline. And when you stitch, you can see that you're not going to touch any of the bone because it's been cut perfectly. At the center back, I just use my rotary cutter to like remove that excess double fold bias tape. You could have also just folded the ends in before attaching the bias tape to make it clean finish, but I just did it the embroidery stitch, so it's completely filled with stitches, so I'm just gonna do that. I marked my grommets already, so all of my grommets are an inch and an eighth away, except the three at the waist, which are a half inch away. You can add as many as you want, and I only have eight grommets in my corset. So don't forget that you have a bone channel, and then you have a channel for your grommets, and then a bone. I love my Camp Snaps grommet machine because it allows me to actually like hole punch holes into my garment before attaching the grommet. Camp Snaps is a family owned business and all of the proceeds go to funding animal shelters, which I absolutely love. This machine comes with a different set of dies for different types of grommets, different sizes, and they have a variety of different colored hardware. You can also do snaps and rivets with this. It's awesome, you just have to buy the dies. This is what the five millimeter grommet size looks like and they are so perfect for a corset. 
Next, I lace my corset. So I have an in-depth tutorial on how to lace it. So um, you can actually loosen the corset and tighten it, which is super easy. So I will link that tutorial. If you use cording instead of ribbon, cover one end in tape and then cut it and you have a really smooth end that'll feed easily. So this is a skirt I found at the thrift store and I thought it would be perfect to pair with this corset but it was a little big for me. I removed about an inch and a half from the top of the waist and then I overlocked all the layers together. Had some white lace trim so I decided to add it to like two tiers on this skirt just to add more lace because it'll bring it together with the corset. It's so cute with the lace that I added. After I overlocked that new waist I'm just folding up 5 eighths of an inch to the inside and pinning it in place and leaving one inch open so I can feed an elastic through. So just take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch so you have enough for your elastic to feed through. Cut an elastic to my waist measurement so it'll fit me now and I just feed it with a safety pin all the way through and when I get to the other end I just overlap an inch. Just take it to the sewing machine and zigzag and stitch that one inch close. Time for the reveal. My boyfriend and I, we went to the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens and the cherry blossoms were in full bloom so I thought it would be perfect to shoot this and I love how this corset came out. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments down below how you would style this corset top. Tag me on Instagram if you guys use my sewing pattern. I would love to see all of your strapless corsets and what fabric combinations you guys choose. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really is the best way to support your favorite creators for free. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.